to Sock Puppet Masterpiece Theater. I am one of your hosts, Dmitry Sokstakovich. And I am Johann Sebastian Sock. Today, we are going to tell you a story all about the wonderful world of music theory. But before we begin, you are going to need some things. You are going to need a blank sheet of paper. And a pencil. And then you are ready for your music theory adventure. But what is music theory? Music theory is how we write and understand music. And the setting of our musical story begins with a line. Chalk! Thank you. And four more lines. Now these five lines are called a staff. A staff consists of five parallel lines. And we number our lines one, two, three, four, five. And notice that we number our lines from the bottom up. We also have four spaces. One, two, three, four. Also numbered from the bottom up. You shouldn't talk with your mouth full. They are called spaces because they are the spaces between the lines. Now, get a blank sheet of paper so we can help you draw your own musical staff. Draw five lines like this. One, Two, three, four, five. And now number your lines like this. One, two, three, four, five. And the finishing touch, we number our spaces. One, two, three, four. Do not forget that if there is anything you need to go back and review, you can just rewind this video. Right. The staff looks so lonely, it needs something else. That's right, a clef. But before we can draw a clef on the staff, we need to learn what a clef is. A clef is a musical symbol that lets you know what range you're in. A treble clef means you are in a higher range. How do we draw a treble clef? There are three steps. Step one is to draw a fan, one slightly slanted stroke skyward. A what? A fan. Draw a line going up, but slightly curved at the beginning, like this. Then what's step two? Step two, without lifting your pencil, comes the P. You make what looks like a slanted P. So, after you draw this P, what do you do next? Then you make a curve around, like this. Let me see if I have got this straight. You draw a BAM, then a P, and then a curve. By George Schulte's baton, he's got it! But what does this have to do with our staff? Well, the treble clef goes on our staff. But where? Like this. The bam begins at the bottom of the staff. Bam! Then the P comes along the top part of the staff. And then the curve goes around the second line towards the bottom. So, like this, bam, p, curve. Just like that. Now you, at home, take that awesome stuff you drew, 
and draw a treble clef on it along with us. Bam, Bam key, key, curve. curve. Now try that a few times. Remember, if you need to review, just rewind the video. Now that we have the setting for our story, right, our staff and treble clef, now we need some characters for our story. Who are our characters? Our characters are the letters of the musical alphabet. All of our notes in music are named after letters. Is that like our regular alphabet? Yes, but a lot shorter. It goes like this. Ham ham, ham ham ham. No 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 no. A B C D E F G. A B C D E F G. Now you try. A B C D E F G. A B C D E F G. Now everybody. A B C D E F G. A B C D E F G. So. Our musical notes are only the first seven letters of the alphabet? Right, only the first seven letters of the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. But our musical alphabet does not always go forwards. Sometimes we have to go backwards, like this. G, F, E, D, C, B, A. G F E D C B A. Now you try. G F E D C B A. G F E D C B A. Now everybody. G F E D C D A. G F E D C D A. Now let's try it one more time, just for fun. G F E D C B A G F E D C B A Now rewind the video and see if you can pick out the mistakes that were sung and you'll know your musical alphabet inside and out. Now, well done my good song. Thank you, thank you. But what do these letters have to do with our staff? We put the letters on the staff to make notes and music. Really? Really. Each line on our staff has a note assigned to it. Remember how the treble clef always curves around the second line? Well, check this out. If I draw a regular letter G, and then I put a BAM and a P through it, Let it me... looks like a treble clef! You're some kind of wizard! Not a wizard, Puh. just a musician. That is why the treble clef is also called the G clef, because it looks like a G. Another reason it is called the G clef is because it curves around the second line of the staff, and the second line of our staff is the note G. So the note that is on the second line of our staff Always G. Now, we can follow our musical alphabet to figure out that if this is G, then this must be F, and this bottom line is E. Then, the note on the middle line is a G, A, B. And then, and then C, D, E, and our top line is F. That spells Eggbf. Right, it does spell Eggbf. But, since that sounds, well, quite silly, we instead use a saying to remember the order. I know some really smart kids who came up with a good one. Every grown-up buys donuts forever. And I do go nuts for donuts. 
So if our lines are every grown-up buys donuts forever, then what are our spaces? Well, if our middle line is G, and F comes before G, the first space must be F. All right. Then what comes after G in the alphabet? Mm, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. Right. So this second space is? Well, this space is C, and then this one must be E. Right. Now, the best part is that you don't have to remember a saying for this, because it spells a word. F-A-C-E. Face. It even rhymes with space. So, how do I keep all of this straight? Well, there are three steps to helping you identify what the musical name of a note is. Step one. We identify if the note is on a line or a space. Is it on one of these lines? Or is it in one of these spaces? Next, we decide if we use every grown-up buys donuts forever or if we use face. If the note is on a line, then you use every grown-up buys donuts forever. If the note is on a space, then you use face. Next, we count up the lines or spaces of our staff along with our saying. Because remember, we count from the bottom up. Every grown-up buys donuts forever, or F a, C, E. Great. So, what do I want to do if I want to find the name of this note? Well, is that note a line or a space? It's a line. Right. And what's the next step? Well, it's on a line, so if it's on a line, we have to count up using every grown-up buys donuts forever. Great, and now what? Now I count up. So, every grown-up buys donuts forever. It's F, it's F. Correct you are. Now, what about This note. Well, it's a space, and space equals face. So now we count up. F, A, C, E. It's an E. Johann Sebastian Sock, you Johann Sebastian Rock. High five! Woo! So remember our steps. One, line or space. Two, donuts or face. Then you count up to its right place. Now, say it with me. Line or space, donuts or face, then count up to its right place. Good job, everybody. Great job. Now, we are going to end this edition of Sock Puppet Masterpiece Theater with some pretty violin playing. This is Winter from Antonio Vivaldi's Four Seasons. Vivaldi was an Italian composer from the early 1700s. He was famous for writing pieces for solo violin. A composer is a person who writes music. When you listen to this music, listen to the sound of the violin. How would you describe it? Is it smooth or rocky? Is it loud or soft? Is it deep and low? Is it thigh and thin? Or is it in the middle? When you hear it, what reminds you about winter? Now, let's take a listen to some of winter from Antonio Vivaldi's The Four Seasons.
think I need a coat. That Vivaldi sure could write some great music. Thank you for tuning in and join us next time on Sock Puppet Masterpiece Theater. Come, come, come.